Hello again, and welcome to these, this interesting but also challenging topic of radiological contamination. We know that the various BRC standards talk about risk assessing this potential hazard uh, in your product safety risk assessment, um, but there isn't a heck of a lot of guidance out there. Uh, the a great website uh, and resource that I found was the FSPCA, as you see here, uh, and they describe it quite nicely. And I have seen some brilliant risk assessments looking for and assessing the various sources of radiation, which could affect the product primarily, though we also need to acknowledge other sources of radiation that might be used in the business, even if we can demonstrate that that source of radiation does not affect the product. All right, so let's just take a quick look uh, at the various possible sources. First of all, I'd like to just look at natural sources of radiation. So for example, radon, and you can Google radon maps in your area and also in the location of your suppliers and where the products originate from, because we want to obviously make sure that your raw materials and your packaging is not uh, contaminated by natural sources of radon. Now, radon is natural, as I say, and it comes from areas with a lot of granite rock. Um, and if you've got this, this radon can contaminate water sources and therefore anything growing in the ground, it contaminates the ground and it contaminates the air above that granite as well. So you might have heard about homes that have radon surveys conducted to see the level of radiation in the home. Um, and that's sometimes a requirement before selling such a home is to have such a radon survey. So that's a natural source of radiation. It can contaminate food and packaging materials. All right, there's of course the accidental source of radiation from these accidents that we remember, either Ukraine and, and the accidents in Japan as well, where you've got nuclear power plant as the source of radiation. That source of radiation absolutely can also contaminate food and packaging. Okay. We have industrial sources of radiation, which are by design used on purpose in industry. So irradiation is a process to sterilize uh, things like dental tools and some foods in some parts of the world. Um, the uh, Europe and the UK doesn't like to have our food irradiated by choice, even though it actually leaves no residual radiation in the food product. All right, it is, it is actually a safe source of radiation because it leaves no residue. Uh, other sources of irradiation used in industry is UV, uh, X-ray, uh, and electromagnetic, electromagnetic frequencies or EMF that you get from uh, your computer monitor, your laptop, your mobile phone, um, all such devices emit certain levels of electromagnetic frequencies. And there are laws that govern um, the type of shielding that manufacturers of these devices need to use so that it's not excessively unsafe to the user of such equipment. All right, but regarding these sources of radiation here, None of these sources are harmful to food or packaging because they leave no residue. Okay, so from what we've seen on the screen here, only this one is not an actual danger to food or packaging materials. Saying that, if you do use these sources of radiation in your business, uh, you, it's not much you can do about EMF, um, but say you use UV as part of your manufacturing process or X-ray, as part of your manufacturing process, then absolutely you need to acknowledge that in your risk assessment, but show how it's more of a health and safety risk to staff and not an actual risk to your product. Now we know that the BRC standards are all about the product. So it's all about product safety. So we still need to acknowledge these sources and show that they are not a risk to the product. Okay, that's the whole purpose of a risk assessment, right? Is to consider all possible risks and then show which ones are significant and need mitigating or those that are not significant, but we've at least acknowledged them. So what do we need to do? We really need to consider contaminated soil, water or air, which could then contaminate our product, either in our own manufacturing location, wherever we are in the world, or the location of our suppliers. So therefore, in your hazard analysis, consider the geographic lo location of your manufacturing site or storage site, all right, uh, and the geographical location for your suppliers. You might be thinking, no way, that's a lot of work. Yes, I know it's a lot of work, but it's got to be done. All right, that's the idea of the risk assessment. Also show the history of the country of origin for each component, for the raw materials, for the packaging materials. 
or that's the history of the country of origin. Do they have natural sources? Have they been affected by accidental sources of radiation? And please bear in mind that these nuclear power plants accidents had an effect ranging far and wide and far beyond these countries. Okay, so we do need to do a bit of research. Just to jump to the actual BRC standards, let's just take a quick look here. So here we see in the food standard, if I just use my control F tool here to look for the word radiation, you see it pops up in section two in our HACCP plan where we need to assess this potential hazard of chemical and radiological contamination. And if I look at the packaging standard, it's a lot more vague. The only time we find it in the packaging standard is here under the definitions in the glossary where we acknowledge that a hazard could be radiological in nature. So the clause under HARA section two isn't specifically asking us to include the risk of radiological contamination in our packaging business if we work into this standard. But bear in mind that if you are making packaging for food customers, they may well come to you for assistance because it's a clause requirement in their standard. Let's take a look at the agents and brokers standard. So if I search for the word radiological, again, we find it under section two, list and record all potential hazards associated with each step, chemical or radiological contamination. All right, and storage and distribution it actually doesn't feature at all, not even in the definitions. Okay, so it's not as much a concern in this, uh, in, in this standard. Bearing in mind that not always, but usually uh, a storage and distribution site is storing somebody else's product and not necessarily their own. All right. Okay, so just jumping back to the slides, um, I hope that this was useful for you. Uh, don't forget that you can always visit our SCC forum if you want to chat about it and um, connect with other colleagues in the industry who can uh, shed even more light on the subject. All right, thanks for listening.